Hello and welcome back to the channel friends, it is great to be here and I hope you're doing well. So today we'll be taking a look at the demo version of Become the Moon. This is a unique strategic deck builder roguelike, where essentially what you're doing is you're assembling a unique deck of minions, spells, and relics, trying to create powerful synergies as your deck grows. Now I do believe that unique is a very fine word to describe this game, because it does take some deck building elements, but it implements them in a different way. And I think you're going to see that as soon as we jump in here. So before we jump in, if you want to get a copy of the game for yourself, there is a free demo on Steam available right now. Link in the video description below. The full release is slated for sometime in 2025. So without further ado, my friends, we're going to hop right on into a new run. And while we're hopping in, please give the video a like if you're enjoying the content. Please also consider becoming a subscriber and joining a growing community. Would really appreciate having you. Thanks so much for spending some time here on the channel today. So let's click new run here and... It all starts with the character selection, right? So obviously we only have one character available here in the demo, and it's this fellow, the Birdsong Reverie, who starts with plus one minion capacity as his special. He also starts with the following starting deck. And you really gotta appreciate the card art in this game, I think it's really well done. Reminds me of a Magic the Gathering, just the overall presentation and aesthetic. Very nice, very pleasant to look at. Let's go! Alright, so it all starts with the Relic selection here, and we'll get these from time to time as we go about our run. And you can kind of see where you're at on the run. If you look at the leftmost little yellow dot there, so that is your progress, right? And each little stop represents a card battle. And throughout the process, we'll be growing and developing our deck. But it all starts with a Relic here. So we have the Shooting Star. Deal 6 damage to a random enemy minion. Minions in all future card drafts gain plus one attack. The first three copies of Onboard, you draw a cost zero. So these are relics. These are special cards that are sort of an overarching buff for your run. So I'm going to go with Shooting Star here. I think this one sounds good. Deal six damage to a random enemy minion. Sounds great. Let's do it. All right, so we have the relic you know, locked in up there. We also get a tier up, which is basically our opportunity to add to our deck to shape our deck to build our deck now there are different types of cards we have minions that actually are summoned to the field and do battle for you you have spells which you know are buffs or debuffs or things of the like damage right and then we have battle spells as well and these are actually like charged down here and sort of in effect you'll kind of see how they work as well so first and foremost we have a shield carrier so this is a shielded unit which means it will ignore the first instance of damage received in battle. It's got two attack and one health. We have Unravel. Draw two cards, deplete a card from your hand. And then we have Quick Cast. Summon a 2x2 two two Moonlit Acolyte. I think we could go with... Let's go with Mask Off. I think that's a fine battle spell. Next up, we have a Talent Scout on death. Summon a 2x2 two two Moonlit Acolyte. We have a Chaotic Caster... To our friendly minion attacks, deal one damage to a random enemy minion. It's a two by two unit as well. Pretty cheap. Yeah, let's go with the chaotic caster. I'm okay with that. So the pigeon is flying. So flying units have a 33% chance to dodge attacks, which is quite nice. I actually like that quite a bit. Let's go with the pigeon. We have the lowly squire. Pay one mana. This gains plus two health. We have another shield carrier here and meditate. Gain plus one max mana. Deplete this. Uh, that's quite nice. Cowardly Rogue, quick attack. So after attacking the minion to the right of this attacks immediately. On death, deal two damage to a random enemy minion. And draw two cards, deplete a card from your hand. I think we can probably go with the Cowardly Rogue. Why not? And a few other UI features here. So this is our mana. We have two of two as we tier up. So this is our tier. As we tier up, we will actually get more max mana. And the cool thing about this game and where it sort of differentiates itself from other deck builders and other card battler type games is your units actually maintain from battle to battle. Meaning if I get this pigeon out here and somehow I get them all buffed up like 10 attack and 15 health, let's say. In the next battle, he'll be on the field summoned with 10 attack and 15 health. So it's sort of, it's unorthodox in that sense, but... I think it's really well done, and it's fun, and that's why we're featuring it here today. So let's go ahead and do our opening move. So you're probably wondering, so Meditate, it costs 3 mana, as you can see there. I only have 2. Yeah, correct. I can't use it yet, but as we tier up, we will actually get more max mana. 
So let's see. Cowardly Rogue. Let's get the pigeon out there. I love that it flies. And I think on board. Yeah, let's just start buffing them up. And let's go ahead and end the round there. Now they're going to do combat. Well, first off, the shooting star takes him out. And then we get direct attack on our opposition. Now, when direct attack occurs, it's not the attack power of the monster attacking. It actually only does one for each monster attacking. Now we have another shot at a relic. So we have a retain card. So choose a card to draw from your hand. It costs one less until played. We have filing cabinet. You may discard a card from your hand to draw a card. Give a minion plus three, plus three, and destroy this, meaning it's a one-time use. Anytime you see destroy this, it's a one-time use. So let's go ahead and retain this for sure. That'll be a great way to get our pigeon all buffed up. And we have Mr. Elephant here. And what does he have? So he has the animated pencil sharpener. <laughs> you really got to appreciate the aesthetic of this game for sure. So ranged. So range doesn't take damage from minions, it attacks. So another element of this game is when minions attack, they will actually take damage equal to the attack power of the unit they're attacking every single time. Unless, of course, they're ranged. Then apparently they do not. So let's go ahead and train our pigeon. That's a free use. Didn't cost any mana. And let's see what our opportunities are here. So we could get a chaotic caster. I think that's fine. Let's populate the field with some more units. And we have Mask Off the Battle Spell. Let's get that so you see this is charging up, right? And let's go ahead and end our turn there. We do have the Medi Crab, so this will restore our health. Don't need to do that right now, but it's a good one to have in the overall deck. So Shooting Star, boom. Shoots down. We have the Moonlit Acolyte on the field now. That's because our Battle Spell procced off. And then we got the Pigeon doing some work. And boom, just a little love tap. Mr. Elephant goes back to the shadows. Now we have another reward. So this is a relic, obviously. End of round, give your taunt minions plus two health. We don't have any taunt quite yet, but that's definitely a mechanic that we can work with. Gain plus two mana this round and destroy this, or plus three, plus three. Let's do this again. Since our units hang around, right? Might as well get some buffed up pigeons for sure. However, let's improve our deck here. So we have a Battle Mage. When you play a Battle Spell, gain plus one mana this round. Okay. Crescent Archer, it's ranged. Okay, I do like that. And then Bravo. Give your minions plus one, plus one. Cost two less for each of your Battle Spells in play. Let's go with the Crescent Archer. I think that's a fine choice. Flesh Morpher. Taunt. Whenever this is attack, copy the attacker stats. That's quite nice. At least it could be. Give a minion plus four health and draw a card. Let's go with that one. Dormant Ent. So this has Taunt. Draw two cards, discard two cards. Let's go with the Dormant Ent. I like the Taunt mechanic. Pay one mana, this gains plus two health. Give a minion plus three health, gain plus two mana next round. Uh, yeah, that sounds great. On death, deal two damage to a random. So you got quick attack. Pay one mana, this gains plus two health. Could also reroll for... Let's reroll. Propaganda. Minions in all future card drafts gain plus two, plus two. Otherwise, we have this again. Let's go with this. Propaganda. All right, so what do we have going on here? So he's got Rise from the Ashes. Resummon the Phoenix as the active battle spell. And then we have a Phoenix Wing, which is flying. Three attack, two health doubled up there and then the phoenix itself is flying does four and five okay so we got a barrage of damage coming our way for sure so i think what we can do is we can look into getting this dormant ent out there otherwise we do have the stream of mana give a minion plus three health gain two mana next round so let's do that get you a little healthier so four five six seven eight nine ten right so we can tank all of this and in return he's going to be hitting them for six right unless they dodge could also get him buffed up a little bit further here. And we could get a little more beef on the field with the Dormant Ent. Which of course has the taunt, so it's going to draw some of the fire. So I think we do that. And another thing, so when you're attacking, right? When our units are attacking, they select them at random. So it's not like he's going to be attacking the Phoenix. It's all selected at random. Now there's ways to sort of dictate 
that a little bit better, I do believe, but just naturally, it's going to happen randomly. And you see the dodge-in effect there? However, the Phoenix has been resummoned, of course. And we see the Chaotic Caster's skill doing some work here. The Ent does go down, but that's okay. Did his job. And we get the big dodge there, and the Phoenix falls. Now, boom, and boom. So our units get one strike per unit, the opposing duelist, and then it's basically a fight to the death. So we did take one HP damage there because he had one HP remaining, if that makes sense. So definitely some different deck building mechanics going on in this one, but you gotta like it. It's a fresh take on a deck building game. So we have ban, remove all abilities from an enemy minion. We have train yet again. Let's go with train. I'm gonna use that on my Ent, because he has taunt. And what do we have here? So we have, okay, these guys have double strike. So when this attacks, it does so twice, yikes. And he's got four of them with a five and four kit. Yikes. Okay, so this is pretty intimidating. Okay, so let's figure this out here. So we have train. I could throw that on my end. It'll make him a three by six creature. Or sorry, a four by seven creature. These guys have four HP. So I think that's a no-brainer. The Pigeon can do some work. He can hang in there and take a couple of them out. We have the Crescent Archer that we could get out there. 4 HP. Does 3 damage. And then we could onboard him. Let's do that. In fact, if he attacks first, he'll be able to take him out. Love the idea of getting a beasted up ranged attacker for sure. And I kind of love that, uh, that card art there. Got a little crescent moon shooting an arrow through itself. That's awesome. So let's do that. All of the mana is spent. Let's see how this shakes out. Let's go. All right, so shooting star. I've got to remember we have the uh, shooting star in effect. It's been quite nice so far. In fact, this guy's about to get pummeled. Oh, yeah, get wrecked. All right, so quite the successful campaign. Now, we could look into adding another relic here. So, your opponent has minus one attack this round. It's a once per round thing. Gets destroyed. We have call, add a random rare card to your hand. When you play a battle spell, draw a card. Let's do that. Maybe we can get into some more battle spells. All right, we've got another guy with some more of these uh, mug men. But let's build our deck. Let's improve. Spore Pod. On death, summon two one by one spores with flying. So that is a flying unit that, of course, can dodge. Brainwash. Give a friendly minion plus three health and taunt. Deplete this. Give your minions plus one, plus one. Cost two less for each of your battle spells in play. I mean, Spore Pod isn't the worst. Brainwash plus three health and taunt. I mean, this is plus four health and it's cheaper. I'm going to re-roll this, actually. We've got Lunar Spark, plus two attack and draw a card. Taunt and shield for the shield jockey. Star Student, when you play a spell on this, gains plus one attack or plus one health. Let's go with the Lunar Spark. I think that's fine. We've got another Pigeon. We've got a Wing Commander flying. When another friendly flying minion attacks, give it plus two, plus two. Uh, absolutely. We have Iron Bark. We have Unravel. Another Iron Bark I don't think is terrible. Beckon the Moon. Discard your deck and deplete this. Angermancer. Quick attack. On attack, steal two attack from the target. We have a battle spell here. For each friendly minion, deal three damage to a random enemy minion. It's a battle spell. Another Lunar Spark. We have Recollection. Let's go with another Lunar Spark. Maybe we can start getting our guys buffed up. And these fellows are shielded, meaning they will ignore the first instance of damage received in battle. We have a distraction. This guy has taunts and 15 HP. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. So what do we got to do here? We have four mana to work with. 
could give a plus one plus one. I think that's really good for our Crescent dude. It'll give him six. It'll allow him to hang in there maybe just a little bit longer. This one would be a good one to use kind of ASAP. Quick cast summon a 2x2 two two Moonlit Acolyte. What's this going to do? When you play a battle spell, draw a card. I think we can do this. Lunar Spark plus 2 attack. Uh, let's see here. I think maybe that's best held on to. Let's go plus 4 health for... Let's go for our Taunted Ent. I think that makes a lot of sense. And let's see how this shakes out. So obviously this guy's going to be getting hit quite a bit, but... You know, it's a pretty even matchup. The, the Ent is doing his thing. Taking him out as they're attacking him with Taunt, right? So that's good. That's what we want. This guy will just be absorbing all of our hits, but... That's okay. Big hit there by the Pigeon. Takes him down. And here we go. We're through the shield. And it's pummeling time. Let's go. Alright, so we have the ability to bend, which will remove all abilities from an enemy minion. Quite nice. After a friendly minion dies, your other minions gain plus one attack. Oh uh, yeah, that's just too sweet not to grab. And that's a relic too. Hangs around. Alright, so we got a little Puppet Master dude. Okay, so all of these puppets are flying, and they're pretty strong, actually. Okay, so we have the Medicrab. We could play this and restore our health. We have the Wing Commander, which would be a big commit, but it's a flying unit that will improve other flying units. I think we definitely play the Medicrab, so it's going to restore our health. And then essentially what that card does is it gets more and more expensive the more times you play it. So I could go Wing Commander, I could go Lunar Spark. I think if we need anything on our Pigeon, it's more HP. Let's go with the Wing Commander. And let's see how this shakes out. Sometimes you're just kind of... What I've noticed in this game, you're just kind of figuring out how things shake out, to be honest. Like, it's hard to always predict. There's a lot of randomness. But I like the ranged attackers for sure. I think that's a really good guy to continue improving. Absolutely. I mean, not a problem here. All right. So on kill, deplete a card from your hand to gain plus one mana this round. We have bind. We have the scale. When you play a minion, set its attack and health equal to the highest of the two. Set its attack and health equal to the highest of the two. That's interesting. Let's do it. I mean, it's highest of the two. I don't see any downside to that. And we did tier up, meaning we got more max mana and we're going to add some more stuff to our deck. So Lunar Eclipse, give a minion plus one, plus one. If your deck is empty, give it plus six, plus six instead. Wow. Draw one card, give a minion plus one attack, and upgrade this. Meaning, I believe the upgrade system is the next time you get it, it'll be plus two attack and draw two cards. That's how it works. We have Amplify, give a battle spell plus two spell power. I mean, this is a cheap one and it's a buff. With the possibility of being very, very strong. Selfish Apprentice, we have Hail and Shield Carrier. Play a spell or battle spell, this gains plus one attack. It's got 5 health. It'd be a 5-5 five, five creature with the scale, right? For each friendly minion, deal 3 damage to a random enemy minion. I mean, we got a lot of minions out on the field. I think that would be a pretty good one. Chaotic Caster. We have Frost Bolt. Another battle spell. Don't mind having those. Channeling. Give a minion plus 2 health and an additional plus 1 health for each card in your hand. Sounds great to me. Ambush. Summon a 2x2 two two Moonlit Acolyte with ranged. With ranged? I think that's a very good one. So we got a lot of battle spells there. Let's see what we have. So Frostbolt. Deal 5 damage to a random enemy minion. And if we look at our entire deck, right? It's starting to get big. It's starting to get built out for sure. 
All right, we have Blood Mist in effect. Each of your minions chooses a random enemy to steal one and one from, okay? We have the Snail Rider, so quick attack and death touch. Destroy any minion that takes melee damage from this. Wow. Okay, so that's kind of scary. So these guys are ranged. These guys will summon a spore with flying. Okay. Gain plus two mana next round. Got plus four health. We got a frost bolt. Deal five damage to a random enemy minion. Otherwise, we have hail. I think we just let hail go. Let's do it. We're gonna go with hail. Uh, we can do lunar spark. Could also do frost. I mean, I wonder if I just try to take him down with battle spells for this particular engagement. I mean, this guy has death touch. That's very scary. Let's just try it. Plus two attack. Let's see how this shakes out. All right, so shooting star takes him down. Boom, boom. Just dishing out damage. Okay, it did take a sizable amount of them out. And here we go. They're all getting their stats kind of rearranged and stolen from. The Ent does its thing, though, with the taunt, right? You got to love that taunt. Wouldn't want my pigeon being taken out by the Death Touch guy, right? All right, so our wing commander is down. Got to get this hit. All right, very nice. And a few love taps, victory. Let's go. All right, so we have Ban. We have your character has plus one max mana, minus two max health. I mean, that's kind of tempting. I mean, more mana is good for us, right? We can do some things with that. Remove all abilities from an enemy minion. I'm going to go with the Yoga Ball. YOLO, my friends. All right, so we have some undead-looking fellow here. And what do we have? Burst. Activate the on-death effect of your minions. On-death deal four damage to a random enemy minion four times. Okay, wow. So these guys are just going to do 16 damage randomly each. Yikes. So that's going to be 48 total damage. What kind of hit points do I have here? So I've got 10, 12. I've got 25. 36. Okay. Well, we're going to have the shooting star, right? But I believe it's going to make that effect proc off. So let's see what we can do. We have hail again. We have iron bark that can certainly bolster our HP reserves. Let's give that to our dormant ent. Plus one health for each additional card in your hand. I think this is a really good one as well. Let's get this on you. We have Ambush. I think this is a good one to play. And then Cowardly Rogue. I think it's another good one to play. Because we just need more beef out there to take some hits. So let's see how this shakes out. Okay, so that makes you fall. And then you're going to do your special skill here. All right, so we got another guy on the field to absorb some damage. Okay. All right, so we actually do manage to hang in there. Or maybe not. Okay, so we take a hit there, and then it's a duel of the ages. We actually take him out, but we took some hits. Wow. Your flying minions have a 66% chance to dodge. Can't have more than six relics. I mean, I think that's a tremendous one for us. Absolutely. All right, we got the greedy caterpillar looking dude. And what does he have going on? Well, first, let's draw. Let's build our deck. Scavenger of the battlefield. Pay two mana. Guess a card. Then draw a card. If your guess is drawn, this gains plus five, plus five. That's like finding a needle in a haystack. Acclimatize. Set a minion's attack and health equal to the highest of the two. 
Give a friendly minion plus three health and taunt to deplete this. Let's go with this. Another Frostbolt. Yep, we'll take the Frostbolt. Ambush. I think that's another fine one to get. Life Drinker. When another friendly minion dies, gain plus one, plus one permanently. This is a minion that costs five mana to summon. However, it would obviously scale pretty well, right? Gain plus one, max mana, and deplete this. Let's go with Meditate. And then I think... See, here's another flying unit. Pay two mana, draw two cards. It's a 3-2. Right-click a minion in play and pay X mana to activate its ability. Let's do it. It's a flying unit. All right, so we have Meditate. Gain plus one, max mana. Stream of mana. Give a minion three health. We have Propaganda. Mask off. So that's a battle spell. I think we can probably open with that. I mean, we do have seven, right? But this will allow us to draw a card. So here we go. Set a minion's attack and health equal to the highest of the two. There's a huge disparity here with the Crescent Archer, but also the Dormant Ent. So how about that? Now it's a 15-15 creature with Taunt, right? These guys are just statues. But this battle spell must be doing something. Deal 3 damage to a random enemy minion. Summon another fatigue with plus 3 spell power. Okay. So it's going to... Essentially, these statues are going to just absorb damage. While the spell takes us out. I think that's the purpose of this deck here. So I guess we'll find out how this goes. A Meditate is max mana. I think it's a good sort of... Way to prepare ourselves for the future. Plus three health and gain two mana next round. I mean, plus three health. Let's put on the wing commander. And let's go ahead and meditate. Now we have eight total mana. Alright, I think that's looking good. Curious to see how this shakes out. These statues aren't indestructible, but of course we'll have some damage coming our way by way of battle spell. So let's see. Nice little shotgun blast there. Okay, so this just gets progressively stronger. Wow, plus nine. Very uh very creative. Very creative uh decks here for sure. Like I said, it's not your traditional card game. It just isn't. However, it looks like we're able to sort of duke it out with the Caterpillar Man. Now what we really need is that heal card. Wait, why? What happened? I don't understand. Can anybody explain to me what happened? I had like 5 HP left. But it looks like we got the big fat game over screen here, so... Wishlist on Steam if you like what you saw here today. The full game will feature longer runs, more cards, more relics, and more playable characters. Let's go with one more run. I feel slighted. I feel shorted, if you will. So let's begin with a relic. Just having trouble really understanding kind of what happened there. Now my experience with this game is I just went through the tutorial. That's about it. So there could be something in the tutorial that I overlooked, perhaps. But I don't know. I had more HP than the guy, and we were duking it out. I feel like we have duked it out before, but I could be wrong. We have Pigeon Plume. When a friendly flying minion attacks, give it plus one, plus one. After a friendly minion dies, your other minions gain plus one attack. Every time you draw eight cards, give your rightmost minion plus two, plus two. I mean, I think this is a really strong one. Especially to begin a run with. Alright, so let's build a deck. We have Dove of Avon. On attack, give your flying minions plus one, plus one. It's a flying unit. I do like my flying units. In fact, we could go with two of them. Let's go with two of them. Arcane Enhancement. Give your minions plus one, plus one. Let's 
Farm Witch. Flying. After a friendly battle spell cast, gain plus one, plus one. It's a 3-2 creature. Let's take that. And then Battle Mage. When you play a battle spell, gain plus one mana this round. We'll try him out. Alright, so we get the Battle Mage. The one guy that we can't afford. If you have no minions, play a one and two new arrival. Yep, that's what we'll be doing. So it's not going to win that fight. But we can buff him up so he can. So it all depends on who attacks first here, I suppose. Alright, let's see what happens. Alright, it's just going to be a wash and then a fist fight in the back alley. Now, some of the mechanics are, are hard for me to ideate around right now, right? With my limited experience with this game, but it is a fun little deck builder. Add a random rare card to your hand. Remove all abilities from an enemy minion, and we have the scale again. I think that's a great one. Alright, so we have another Birdman here. Except for this guy's got Haunted Books. And Frostbolt. Okay, so we have the Farm Witch. All right, let's see. Well, let's get the farm witch out there. And let's go. All right, Frostbolt does its thing. And we're going to have another fist fight to the death. All right, so we have Yoga Ball. Yeah, I'm going with the Yoga Ball. I'm going to maybe try to front load some relics here, maybe. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Looks like we have a Kraken. But first, let's improve our deck. Lost Cause, Double Strike, and Shield. Five attack, two health, with Double Strike and Shield, though. Minions you summon during battle gain plus two attack and attack immediately. Quick attack. On attack, steal two attack from the target. I like the Lost Cause here. A Lunar Spark, Frostbolt, Shield Jockey. I think Lunar Spark is great. A Crescent Archer, one of my favorites from the last run. And then Dual Wield, give a minion plus two attack and double strike. Deplete this. Imagine that on the Archer that we just got. Retain a card in your hand for a round at the end of the round. Otherwise, we have a battle spell that's free. Yeah, we'll definitely take that. All right, Medicrab. Don't need to use it anymore. A uh, Battle Mage, I think, is a really good one to get. Just to have on the field. What do we have, though? The Beast Below. So, a ranged unit on the tentacles and then the middle. So, we just got to get some units on the field, it seems. So, I could do... We could do the Battle Mage, and we could onboard him. Yeah, let's do that. Alright, let's see how this shakes out. Not great. That's how this shakes out. Alright. Fist fight, though, right? Overseer's Whip. Minions you summon during battle attack immediately. We got Train. Yeah, we definitely need to get more buffed up for sure. Like, that's obviously apparent. We have these Mugmen here who do double strike. Alright, so let's definitely get Frostbolt down. Absolutely need to get some Frostbolt action. We actually get plus one mana from that. And, of course, the Farm Witch will gain plus one, plus one. So I think this deck is all about battle spells. Lost cause. So this guy has double strike. Will be a 5-5 five, five creature. Sounds great to me. And a shielded creature as well. And then we have a free train. Otherwise we can onboard or bring aboard a dove of Avon. 
Uh, let's definitely train you, buddy. So plus one, plus one. Let's get the Dove of Avon out there. Just need more units on the field to absorb some hits. Especially with the mechanic that when you attack, you know, you take that damage as well as dish out that damage, right? Just having more units out there is good, at least in the early game, or so I found. Your battle spells remain in play for two rounds. That sounds tremendous. Given we have some units currently on the field that benefit from battle spells, I think I should probably go in on some battle spells. All right, so we have Thornwood Vines with Death Touch, okay? Imagine getting Taunt on this fellow here. Moonlight Enchantress. Minions you summon during battle gain plus two attack and a shield. Battle Symphony, quick cast. Give your minions plus four, plus four. Okay. I mean, it's another battle spell, but for six mana, that's just so expensive. This guy will give shield. Anger Mancer, we have arcane enhancement. Obtain a card in your hand for a round. Steal two attack from a target. Here's another battle spell. Let's do that. It's a battle spell. We're good with that. We have the Overseer. Let's go with that. Harmonize. Your battle spells have plus one spell power this round. Stream of Mana. I think that's a good one to get. Show of Force. Summon two 2x2 two two Moonlit Acolytes. Give your minions plus one attack. It's a battle spell as well. Yes. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try doing some battle spells here. But I kind of want my Crescent Archer on the field. Otherwise, we do have the Moonlight Enchantress. We can get her out there. Let's do it. This guy's double strike. He's going to be able to take down the, the Taunter for sure. Plus, he's shielded. He's got 8 HP. I mean, I guess we'll see how this goes. Okay, so they both hit him. All right, so the taunter is gone. Let's go. Let's let's duke it out here, boys. All right, very nice, very nice. I think we're starting to gain a little bit of an identity, and I think that's definitely an aspect of this game, right? As you kind of go on, you gain an identity with your deck. It depends on what's available to you, right? What draws you get. That's the fun of deck builders, I suppose. All right, we have Mr. Puppet Master. With all the flyers, shuffle the order of all enemy minions. Okay. So I could give somebody dual wield. I could restore my health. I think I should absolutely do that. Plus three, plus three. Really hard not to give it to our double striker, right? Here's a battle spell. Plus one, plus one to all. And we could also do dual wield. So let's definitely do this, right? So we got Amana back. It looks like after the spell is cast, she's going to get buffed up, which is good. We could get a dove out there. We could get... I think I should onboard to buff. Plus two attack and double strike. I mean, two double striking units that are... Feisty and Fierce sounds good to me. Let's do it. Let's try that. Just got to make sure we hit them given they're flying, right? So that was a dodge, but our shielded fellow is still looking nice and healthy and strong. And boom, you're done.
All right, so kill Horde. Draw a card, then retain each card in your hand for a round. Otherwise, Tombstone. Start a battle. Trigger a random friendly minion's on death effect. Don't really have that going on. Deplete a card from your hand to gain plus one mana this round. I'll do that. I think that's fine. Anyway, we can increase our mana. Given the way things carry over from battle to battle, right? Alright, we have the Levitator. We have Recollection. Beckon the Moon. Discard your deck. Deplete this. Choose a discarded card to return to your hand. Pay two mana, draw two cards. Could also re-roll this. Let's re-roll it. I don't really like any of those choices. Amplify. Give a battle spell plus two spell power. How about hail? I think that one did pretty good for us last time. Lunar spark. Otherwise, mimicry. Your leftmost minion copies the stats of the leftmost enemy minion. Okay. Let's do lunar spark. It's cheap. Good way to buff up our units. Rule breaker. After an enemy minion attacks, this attacks it. Interesting. I mean, it's three. It's interesting. I don't love it, but... On death, summon a two-by-two two moonlit acolyte. Let's take him. Mimicry, we got Ritualist. Deal two damage to a random enemy minion. Let's go with Hail again. Alright, so our battle spell is still in effect here. Because of this, right? So that's nice. We can deplete a card to gain an additional mana. So that's an option. We have Frostbolt here, which I think is probably pretty good. Given it just works with our deck. We have another one of these. Stream of mana, plus three health. Two mana next round. Let's think about this for a second. We have seven to work with. This will bring us down to five, but we'll actually get six. This will make the farm witch really strong, actually. So we could do plus two attack and draw a card. I think that's fine. Plus two attack for you. Crescent Archer. We can get the Archer out on the field. Yes. Okay. We can deplete a card and then play Stream of Mana. So confirm. Throw the Overseer and go Stream of Mana. What is this going to do? Plus three minion health. Let's throw it on you, given you're getting buffed up. I think you can do some good things. So let's go. Definitely interesting to kind of see how everything is going to unfold, right? It's definitely a part of this game that is very fun. It's... In some battles, you're not certain if you're going to be successful or not, frankly. Looks like we can speed this up just a little bit. Alright, so it's 4v4, 3v4 now. And it's 2v2. We've got our ranged crescent archer. Alright, very nice. It was never in doubt, right? <laughs> All right, Lyceum Armaments. After you cast a battle spell, summon a 2x2 two two Moonlit Acolyte with Taunt. I mean, I think that's a great one. We're all in on battle spells, right? All right, Show of Force. Battle spell. Summon two 2x2 two two Moonlit Acolytes. Give your minions plus one attack. We have Hail. We have the Medi Crab. So these guys are going to what? Death Touch. Let's 
This guy taunts and copies stats. On death, summon a flying spore. Force the leftmost enemy to attack the rightmost enemy minion. Okay, so if that's the case, we want him, since he's going to copy stats, right? Leftmost enemy, rightmost minion, right? Okay. Show of force. I think that's a decent one. We could do hail. Chaotic caster. Let's definitely go with hail. Get some mana back. We have show of force. Let's throw it down. Let's throw the chaotic caster down. Okay, too many minions. Okay, got it. Okay, so you can actually drag one to your hand, huh? Ah, got it. Okay. Guess I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. So let's get you down there instead, and... I suppose Medicrab can go ahead and restore the old HP. And let's see how this shakes out. Let's go. Got some death touch units. I don't like that. That's scary. We can take him out like we just did there. That's great. Wow. Hail just did some absolute work there. Another question I had is, can my summoned units be summoned if we're at max capacity? And we absolutely can, which is good. Yeah, this guy's about to get just bludgeoned down. All right, Codex Battalia. When you play a battle spell, draw a card. Sounds absolutely perfect for us. Does it not? Alright, we got Evil uh, Caterpillar Man again and familiar with this deck. Set of minions, attack and health equal to the highest of the two. Yeah, that's a very good one. I mean, we could get it again. Let's get it twice. Another Crescent Archer. Got Protect, Shield the Minion, Deplete this. Yes. Flesh Morpher. A taunter. Dragon Rider, show of force. Dragon Rider is flying. After a friendly battle spell cast, this attacks immediately. Sounds good to me. Alright, so we have hail. We could get hail down again. I mean, it's useful. Like, the key here is just doing a bunch of DPS, right? And Hail will certainly do that for us. We have our double attacker. This guy will just simply strike him down. This guy's hitting twice as well. Can strike him down. So, plus two attack. Could also get my Dragon Rider out there. Let's pull you back. Let's get the Dragon Rider out there. He's flying. He's 5'5". Five, five, very strong. Let's get the Crescent Archer with the attack buff. Let's do something like this. Let's see if the damage output is there. It should be with the Hail, right? The Hail is just beastly. Like, look at how strong it is. He's got a lot of work to do to take down all of our units, right? Oh yeah, this guy's going to get smoked. Whereas in the last run, right? He gave us a run for the money. Just a little bit. Yeah, this guy's getting absolutely cooked. Boom. End of demo. Okay. So maybe I didn't fall. Even though it said game over. But looks like we have officially reached the end of the demo. I think this particular deck that we managed to put together here... With the strong battle spells and the relics that sort of support the battle spells, right? And units that get buffed up and give us mana when we play battle spells. I think that was a really fun little synergy to play around with. So I'm going to hop on back to the main menu. 
So this has been Become the Moon, and I must admit, I really did enjoy myself with this game. It's got a lot of character, it's got a lot of style, I really do like the artwork, I like how it thinks about, you know, deck builders and roguelikes just a little bit differently. So if you like what you saw here today, my friends, you can certainly get a copy of the free demo for yourself, link in the video description below. I do think it's one to definitely keep an eye on, right, I sort of think about the long-term state of this game, more characters, more relics, right, more cards. Could definitely be fun and really be interested in seeing what a full run looks like. Again, it's set to release sometime in 2025. So with all of that said, my friends, if you enjoyed yourself here today, please give the video a like. Would really appreciate that. Please consider becoming a subscriber as well. Would really love having you in a growing community. Huge shout out to the dev team of Become the Moon. You folks have been fantastic to work with. And huge shout out to you, the viewer. Thanks for spending some time here on the channel today. So with all of that said, my friends, I'm going to get on out of here. But thanks again so much, and I'll be catching you in the next video. Thanks a lot.